We're going to talk here about math pace geometry, uh, 1114, all right? And particularly here, I'm on uh, page 13. I have it on good authority that this is one of the toughest paces, at least the pace test is one of the toughest in the whole course. Um, so we're going to give you some lessons that should help you be prepared for that test. So hopefully uh, you won't be surprised and uh, get a bunch wrong, all right? Uh, so the way some of the questions are worded on the test is a little different than the way it's presented throughout the pace, and so we'll kind of give you a heads up uh, before you get to the end of the pace of what to know and what to study for, that, uh, for the pace test, all right? But uh, let's talk for a minute here about Theorem 57, uh, top of page 13. And um, before we get to that, let's talk about the definition of an inscribed angle and um, how we can determine the number of degrees in that inscribed angle. So I've drawn a triangle here. Here's the center. And if I come over here to the side like this and say, okay, that's a 50 degree angle, okay, because it's from the center. And if I measured it with a, with a protractor, it would be 50 degrees, okay? That means this arc out here is also 50 degrees. So this is 50 degrees the central angle, and then the arc is 50 degrees. Now watch this. If I take this same arc, which is these two points right here, okay, and uh, let me just get rid of this so it's not as confusing, just lightly, all right? So I'm gonna take this point and take it all the way to the back wall, and then bring this all the way to the back wall. Now, how many degrees is that? Obviously, it's not the same, right? It's not 50 degrees, even though it intercepts arc 50 over here. So this angle is exactly half of 50. So this would be 25 degrees. Now watch, I can take these same two points and come over here like this. Guess what? 25 degrees. I could go from here to here and then from here, meet it, guess what? That's also 25 degrees. So no matter where I connect these to the back wall, it's gonna be half, exactly half of that intercepted arc. So take these same two points and imagine coming here or here or here, anywhere, and it's gonna always be half, okay? So um, we're gonna use this, this theorem to look at the proof on page 13, and uh, there are some gaps that we have to fill in here. So what's given is that we have this quadrilateral ABCD, and it's inscribed, which means the four corners touch the circle. Now what the theorem here at the top of the page, corollary three tells us, is that the opposite angles, so this angle, and we'll mark this angle over here, are going to have to be supplementary angles, which means if you add them together, they'll equal 180. So if we know this angle, I could easily figure out what this is by subtracting it from 180. Let's say this is 70. Well, then this would have to be 110, right? 180 minus 70. And same here, D plus B would equal 180 supplementary angles. All right, so this quadrilateral is inscribed in the circle. That's given. And now they just give us a blank. <laughs> and we're supposed to figure out, okay, what am I supposed to put in this blank? Now the next line, sometimes it helps if we look ahead and see what other information they give us. So line three tells us the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C, okay, is equal to half of the measure BD, okay, so measure A is half of BD, all right, so you see that. If you just look at this angle here, it goes to right at this point and comes over here to this point, so kind of ignore the C, so arc BD is half, okay, of AD, and it says that we have measure of angle C, and over here we have measure DAB, so angle C is half of DAB, okay? Now where in the world are they getting all this from? <laughs> well, 
We're supposed to be using theorem 57 over here, which says that the measure of an inscribed angle is equal to half the measure of its intercepted arc. So what we need to do right here is take that truth from that, um, that theorem, look at our diagram here, and see kind of where we're headed with it, okay? So we're headed to this point. So we're going to set this up first and say that the measure of angle A is equal to half the measure of arc BD, okay? So that's what we were just noticing here. Angle A is half of BD. And then we'll put a colon. And then I want you to do the second part of this. So the measure of angle C equals half the measure of DAB, all right? And you can see that, like we said, from this diagram. And then what we're doing here is we're putting those two things together. So we're saying if I add measure of angle A plus measure of angle C, and then I'm factoring out this one half from here, okay? Now that's kind of tough to know what's supposed to go there because that's from way back several paces ago when we talked about properties and uh, maybe that's a little rusty for you, okay? So I'm gonna give you a clue. <clears throat> We're doing addition. All right, so I'm gonna give you that freebie for that one, okay? Now as we move through here, we have the measure of BD, and you can see this right here, BD, plus the measure of DAB equals 360. Now that's given, okay? And over here, that's just the definition of the measures of a circle. So these two arcs, when you add them together, it forms a circle. So therefore it must equal 360 degrees. So that all that is given. And now we know that by doing substitution, we're supposed to put something here on this blank. Now let's look ahead. Uh, before I do this one, I'm going to jump to here, all right? What does this problem on page 13, question 4, what does it say we're supposed to prove? Well, if you look at the top of the page, it tells you measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C equals 180, okay? <coughs> so that, you already know, right from the, right the get-go, you know what's given, and you know what you're going to have to prove, so you know what you need to write in the line down here. And uh, they also give us some clues over here of what these two points are. So all we're left with is we've got one blank that we need to put in. Since I know that I'm trying to prove that A plus C, measure of A plus measure of C equals 180, then what we're going to do right here See how this is the same as this, this is the same as this, equals one half of this. Notice this is the same as this, okay? So get the big picture here. This whole thing is the same as this whole thing, and this is equal to 360. You see that? And so down here, in place of this quantity, I'm going to substitute, so you're going to put one half, okay? And then in place of this, we're going to put what this is equal to, which is the 360 degrees. And then if you solve that, you see now you've got your final statement, okay? That's kind of a tricky one. I, I, um, I know that this one throws a lot of students for a loop, and so we kind of talked our way through this one and, and basically did this for you on the board, but you need to fill it in on your pace. Uh, you need to finish this part, but I want you to see what they're doing here. The substitution, the 360, that half of 360 is how we get the 180. <clears throat> we had to kind of give you this clue, uh, but the rest of these were all given, okay? So that was, that's pretty easy. All right, let's um, talk for a minute now about page 14. And um, again, notice, let me erase some of what I have here. And uh, <clears throat> 
Let's jump down to, um, <clears throat> well, we're trying to find some angles here. So let's look at, in the upper right hand corner, we have AD. And then this comes over here to C and to B. All right. So we have a quadrilateral, four sided figure. And uh, what do we know about this? Just by looking at it, we know that A plus C is going to have to equal 180 degrees. Okay, they're supplementary angles. And they're across from each other. Now, you can't tell that by looking at it because they don't necessarily look like they're going to add up to 180. But, but there's proofs through here that make this very clear that it has to equal 180. Okay? Um, so if we know the number of degrees of one of these, we can easily calculate the other one. And so that's what I was talking about here at the top of the page. And, um, and then there's also a statement there for 8 and 9. If we have a diameter going through the middle of a circle, then uh, there's, we can figure out these other angles as well. All right? So I want you to, I think the rest of that page, if you um, study the examples in the pace, and see where they're getting those numbers. And this is another important point I want to make. Don't just go up to the score key and mark something wrong because you had the wrong number and not understand how to get that number, okay? So <clears throat> if you're wrong, go back and try to figure out where, you know, what, there, ha there has to be some kind of a theorem or corollary, uh, some kind of a rule that you have to follow. And um, maybe there's a clue in the score key that shows the steps that they use to get there. Maybe study that a little bit. Make sure you understand it because you need to know that for the checkup, the self-test, the PACE test. All right.